Hello photographers, today I'm going to show you how to use a handheld flash meter. And before we get started, I want to let you know that it is not necessary for you to use a handheld flash meter in order to get great flash photos. In fact, I don't use a flash meter, but having and using one can be a very helpful tool. So in order to demonstrate how to use this, we're just going to take a self-portrait of me. And before we turn on the flash meter, before we turn on a flash, before we do anything else, we have to set the settings on the camera for our ambient light. And I've already done that to prepare for this. So currently the camera set to ISO 200, which is my lowest ISO, a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is my sync speed. And both of those settings were chosen in order to black out the ambient lights. I want only the flash to show in these photos. And finally, I chose an aperture of f2.8. And the reason I chose f2.8 is because I want any detail that might show up in this background behind me to just go out of focus with a relatively shallow depth of field. Now with your camera setting set, you are ready to get your flash meter turned on and get your flash exposure dialed in. And here's how you do it. You first have your flash turned on and then you turn on your flash meter. And for this demonstration, I'm using the Sekonic L308S handheld meter. And the power button on top allows me to turn it on. Now, one of the really important things to know is that this little dome on the front has to be over the photosensitive light meter in order to get an accurate flash reading. You also need to make sure that your mode is set properly because you can use this to meter for ambient light and for flash. In order to change the mode, you just press the little mode button until that square is around the flash icon. And then you need to set the settings on here to match your camera settings, specifically the ISO and the shutter speed, but not the aperture. And I'll explain that in a moment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change the shutter speed, which is the time value right here. And in order to do that, I use these side buttons here in order to change it until it says 250th. And once I'm at 250th, I can hold down this ISO button and use those same up and down buttons to get myself down to ISO 200. Once those two settings are set, you'll see that there's the F here and a zero underneath it. And there's no buttons that indicate we can change the aperture. This is where the light meter is going to display what the aperture on the camera should be in order to get a good exposure for the flash at its current power. So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to trigger my flash using my smartphone here. And if we take a look, I'm on group A and my flash is currently set to one quarter power. And in order to get this to work, you press this button on the side of the meter. And that makes the little square indicator flash, indicating that the meter is ready to take a reading. You then hold it up to your subject where the light's going to be illuminating them and you fire the flash. And in doing that, we get an F reading on there and our F reading is f 8.6 so it's roughly eight and two-thirds of a stop in terms of aperture now we want this to read f 2.8 because we've set the camera aperture to f 2.8 if we take a photo at this flash power of one quarter it will be too bright and it would look like this so we need to get this to read f 2.8. Now we can calculate this pretty easy. We're at f 8 plus two thirds of a stop. From f 8 to f 5.6 is one stop. From f 5.6 to f 4 is two stops. And from f 4 to f 2.8 is three stops. So we need to go about three and two thirds of a stop down in flash power. And I'm going to change that on here. So we're going from one quarter down one stop to one eighth, two stops to one sixteenth, three stops to one thirty second power. And I'm gonna go three stops plus one third down to one sixty fourth and two thirds of a stop. And now I'm going to test fire that again. In order to do that, I need to press the button on the side to clear and prime it again, hold it in place and take another test. And now we get a reading of F2.8.2, which in my opinion is close enough. And what that means is this is dialed in for a perfect exposure. And if we take a test shot, we will see that that looks pretty darn good. And there we go. We've got a nice even exposure on this side of my face here from this light. Now, one of the important things to understand is that you can make a judgment call here. For instance, for my tastes, 
This is a little bit dim. I would like it to be a little bit brighter, but you could leave it there if you wanted to. You could make it darker too, depending upon the aesthetic you're going for in the shot. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it there and we're going to move on to metering the rim light that's behind me because I want to create some separation from the background on this side of me. This is a flash set up with a grid and I'm going to turn this one on and this one is in group B. So I'm still going to be controlling this with my smartphone. And when we switch over here, right now we have group B set to one quarter of a power. And what we're going to do is take a reading with the flash meter. So again, we prime the flash meter and we put the meter where the flash will see it. And then we take a test shot. And this gives us an F11.9 reading. That's pretty bright. We need to go down four stops, almost five. So for group B, we're at one quarter power. We're going to go down one two, three, four. We're going to start with four stops and we're going to go back and we're going to do another test, reprime the meter and hold it up and take another shot. And that gives us 2.8.9. So we'll go down another third of a stop on the light to one, one twenty-eighth plus 0.7 stops and prime it one more time and test it one more time. And now we're getting F2.8.1, which is basically spot on. And what that means is we are ready to take the photo. And what we're going to do is take that classic photographer's photo. I'm going to hold my camera up and I'm going to look like a photographer. So let me set the self timer on my remote app on my phone and we'll take this photo. And boom, we've got a really great looking perfectly exposed photo without taking a single test shot with the camera because we were able to use a handheld light meter to precisely set our lights and make sure that they would be properly exposed. And that's basically how you use one of these. It's a very simple process. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't use a flash meter. If you're interested in how I work through and set my lights up, check out this video right here. It'll explain the entire process. And if you have any questions about using a light meter or photography in general, let me know down in the comments and then get out there and take some damn photos.